In this video, I'm gonna teach you all about props in React. So I have a Vite app already created here that has pretty much nothing in it except for an empty div and it just displays nothing. And what I wanna do is turn this into an app that displays dad jokes and allows me to rate how good or bad they are. So let's create a dad jokes app. First, we'll start by rendering a joke. So if I create a variable dad joke, there we go. I used to be a banker, but then I lost interest. That's like, uh, I don't know, what rating would you give that? I think that's like a three out of five stars. Okay, I'm happy with that. So, so I'm gonna put this dad joke in the P tags, and then I think I'll just make another P tag, but I don't want this to be a number. I actually want this to be uh, three stars out of, I wonder if there's an empty star emoji. Uh, awesome. Okay, I wonder how that looks. Oh, that is so perfect. I used to be a banker, but then I lost interest. Three out of five stars. Okay, so that's just one joke, but I want to have at least two of these things. So I'm gonna copy and paste this code, but I need a new dad joke. So let's see, const dad joke two. That's the same joke. Um, okay, so maybe I'll have to Google for this one. Let's see, I'll just grab the very top one. I'm afraid for the calendar, it's days and <laughs> Oh, I like that one better. I think that's four out of five. Okay, dad joke two, four out of five stars. Okay, all right, let's see, yes. Perfect, awesome, all right. So now I have two dad jokes that are both rated by me. And already I can see that I'm getting a little bit of duplicate code here. It's not terrible, but I've duplicated the joke twice. And usually when you find duplicate code, it's not a bad thing to start thinking about refactoring and probably creating a new function to share that code. So in React components, we do this by taking the code and creating a new component. So I'm gonna create a joke.jsx file that exports a joke component that is just those things. And I'm gonna wrap this in a div and there we go. I have a joke component. I didn't use the word function though. I should probably do that. There we go. All right, it is a joke component function. So now I can import my joke component into my app JSX file. So import joke from joke. And then instead of having those bits of code duplicated, I could just add two jokes. Oops, there we go, okay. Uh, but this is gonna fail immediately, and if we check the console, it's because dad joke is not defined in my joke component. If we go back here, I can see that I need that dad joke variable that exists in uh, app.jsx, but it doesn't exist in joke.jsx. So I guess I could just cut this out of here, paste it over here, there we go. I now have that variable that can be rendered. Uh, and then if we look on the screen, there it is, it is working, but I'm getting the exact same data twice. I have this joke component that I can reuse, and that's great, that's step one, but it's always using the same data. So I need to reuse that component, but have it render different data each time. And this is where we start using props. But before I dive into props, I wanna take a moment to just think about this from a pure JavaScript perspective. So let's say we don't have joke.jsx. Instead, we're just in a standard JavaScript file and we have a joke function, lowercase j joke function. And instead of rendering out some markup to a web page, uh, it's just gonna console log it, I think. So let me change this slightly. We're gonna console log the dad joke and we're gonna console log the rating. And that's all this function does. It just console logs them out. So right now, if I were to call this joke function in my JavaScript code, 
it would always log out the same joke. It's always this dad joke with this rating. So in normal JavaScript, if I wanna call this function multiple times, but I want the data inside the function to change each time I call it, instead of defining that data within the function, what I would do is let that be passed in as function parameters. So I'm gonna have the joke passed in and I'm gonna have the rating passed in. And then when I invoke the function, I can pass in different things. So I'll pass in the joke and this had a three star rating. And I had the other joke, which had a four star rating. So if I call it like this, I can pass in different data each time. And I can actually have this function do something cool. So uh, I'm gonna pass in a number here. And then I want this function to actually create this star string based on that number. So I could say, let stars equal an empty string. Then we're going to do something like this, but actually I want this to be out of five stars. I'm gonna say if it is less than the rating, we get that, otherwise we get yay, the empty star, perfect. This is how things would work in normal JavaScript without JSX, and hopefully this all makes sense. Because we have some logic in a function, we're just console logging some stuff out, and I actually need to log out the stars here. And this is a reusable function, we don't put the joke data in the function, we just put all of the logic in the function. Then when I wanna execute that logic, I can call the joke function and pass in whatever data I want. So this is how it works in JavaScript, and this is pretty much how it works in JSX too, because this component is just a function. So really, I wanna do the exact same thing where I pass in a joke and a rating, and then instead of console logging that out, I'm gonna render this out in the markup. So I'm gonna make this look just like my pure JavaScript version, uh, where we create the stars string, and instead of console logging, I put that in a p tag. And really the only big difference here is that this is a JSX component. Everything else is normal JavaScript. But in normal JavaScript, I invoke the function directly. And in JSX land, I create the component, but I would never, ever, ever invoke the component like this. This is not what we do. Instead, we include the component in the markup of another component. So here I have the joke component like this. This isn't me calling the joke function. This is me telling React, I want the joke markup to be rendered right here and React will then call the joke function at some point, but we don't call it directly. So we can't actually pass in the joke and the rating here because we're not invoking this as a function. But what we can do is provide information here. We can provide properties on the joke component and React will pass that information to the function when React invokes the function. And we do that by specifying key value pairs on the component itself. So I'm gonna say the joke for the joke component equals that string and the rating is equal to three. And the joke for the second joke component is this dad joke two, and the rating is four. So we specify these key value pairs just as we would on normal HTML elements, where we have the name of the attribute to the left of the equal sign, and then the value to the right. And since these values are JavaScript values, we put them in the curly braces to specify that it's JavaScript. And you've probably already seen this if you add a class name to a div where you're just adding something like this. This is adding a class name prop to the div. And if it's just a plain string, we don't technically need the curly braces, but if it's any sort of JavaScript, we need those curly braces. But this is it. This is how we pass information to another component. This is using props. So when we add the component to our markup, we can specify as many key value pairs as we want, and we can pass in any JavaScript value that we want here. This could be a simple string, or it could be an object or a function, or even another component. Anything can be passed in here. But then on the other side of things, in the actual joke component itself, this isn't how those properties are passed into the component. Because they're key value pairs, this is a joke and this is a rating, this data gets passed in as a JavaScript object. So what we end up with is a properties object that contains all of the different properties that we pass in. So we'll have properties.joke and properties.rating. And the first time this joke component is used, it will have this for the joke and three for the rating, and then the second time it will have this for the joke and four for the rating. It's just like calling the function twice, except we're not responsible for calling the function. 
but we did specify the data that ended up in this function. And instead of using the word properties, usually we just write the word props for short, uh, but then I can actually use this data in here. So this isn't dad joke anymore, it's props.joke. And this isn't rating, it's props.rating. And now this should actually render the jokes on the screen and here they are rendered correctly. And all the red on the right here is from the errors that were occurring as I was saving the files in the middle of doing things, but everything is working now. So I have these jokes and I can specify any number of jokes here and pass in a different bit of data to each joke component to reuse this component however I want. And just to prove this a little bit, I'll update this to an exclamation mark and maybe change the rating to a one. And over on the left here, we can see that that's updated because I'm just passing in different data to that component. So it's gonna render that piece of data. And now I wanna go back to my plain JavaScript example because it's basically like I'm passing in an object here where I have a joke property and a rating property. And instead of passing in two different things, I'm passing in this entire object. So I'm just going to put this on multiple lines here and I'll ignore the second joke for now, but that's it. I'm calling the function. And instead of passing in two parameters, I'm passing in an object that has two properties. Then on the other side of things, instead of just getting a joke and a rating, I get a props object that gives me my rating property and my joke property. So it really is important that you're comfortable with JavaScript to start working with React because a lot of things that seem complicated in React are really just plain old JavaScript things that React is using but didn't invent. So for example, if we're passing in an object to a function here, we can accept that object as a single parameter here that we name props, but we could also destructure that object into its different properties so that instead of having to use dot syntax here, I have created a rating variable and a joke variable that will represent the joke and rating properties in the object that's passed in. And this technique is used a lot in React because we don't necessarily wanna to have to access all of those properties on the props object. Instead, it can be nice to just accept the rating and the joke here as variables and then I can just use them without having to specify props in front of everything. And this can read a little bit nicer because on one side we are specifying the key and the value that we want to be passed into that component. Then on the component side, we're accepting those variables that will have the different values. And this is used all the time in React, but it really is just a basic JavaScript concept. Another thing you might see that's not as common is people might accept the props object then destructure on the first line of the component like this, uh, which is basically just the same thing, but you're adding an extra line of code, but it's much more common to just destructure straight into the function like that. And if you know your JavaScript well, you'll know that we can also specify default values here. So we could default the rating to zero if we wanted to. And that way, if I just completely leave off that property from one of these components, it will end up having a rating of zero or whatever I set the default value to be. But I like that joke, so I'm gonna set it back to four. And I'm gonna refactor this a little bit because it's likely that this data would be inside of an object when we get it in our JavaScript code. So I'd probably already have this set to be the joke on a dad joke object, and I would have a rating set to four. Uh, then down here, I can have dad joke two dot joke and dad joke two dot rating which shouldn't modify this at all. We should still see it as it was before, but the data is coming from this object up here. And one thing to note here is that the properties in this object are identical to the attribute names I'm putting in the component. So I'm just saying the joke is this object's joke property. The rating is this object's rating property. And it can be a little bit frustrating for a large object when you're just passing in everything individually, even though the names are identical, joke and joke, rating and rating. So in a case like this, what we can do is delete all of this, open some curly braces, and then just spread that object into the component like that. And this is the equivalent of the code we just saw. So I'm gonna put these side by side so we can see them. 
So this is the equivalent to this. And if we look on the screen, we should see this component rendered identically twice. But for a large component where you just want to pass in all of the properties of an object, this can be a nice little technique to have. And again, this is just a JavaScript thing that we're using in React. And I'm going to change up this code a little bit. I'm going to delete this version of the joke and I'm going to put this joke into its own object as well. So let's give this a rating of three and this is the joke. And I'm actually going to create this as an array because this is generally how we'll get our data in any web app, including a React app. So we'll end up getting data probably from an API. Uh, we'll get a list of objects in an array, and then we want to display this on the screen. We want this data to be displayed in React components. So doing this for two separate objects would be pretty easy. I just say this first one is for the first joke. So jokes zero dot rating. And then the second time I want to do this, I can do it for the second joke. And I could have spread this, but since it's just two properties, I decided not to. And everything should still be working over here. That's awesome. Now, what happens if I add another joke to this array? Let's see, will you do this for me? Yay, rating two, it rated it for me as well. I used to be addicted to soap, but I'm clean now. <laughs> I think that's like a three, that might even be a four. I like that. That's <laughs> okay, five. Uh, <laughs> So I now have three things in my jokes array and this is the data and really what I want is for my UI to represent my data. So I have three jokes in my data array but I only have two jokes being represented on the screen and that's because I haven't manually gone in and added another joke component. And you can see how this would grow out of hand really quickly. So we end up needing techniques like this where we will take the joke map over it, create a new component, and then we're just defining that logic once, but every single joke in that array will end up being presented on the screen. And if I add another joke, I now have four jokes in my jokes array, and I don't have to change any of this logic here. It should just present all of those jokes on the screen. I'm reading a book about anti-gravity. It's impossible to put down. That's like, that's like a one, that didn't make me laugh. There we go, much better. So this is rendering a list of things, which I'm gonna cover in more detail in my next video. So make sure you don't miss that. If you like this video, leave a thumbs up, subscribe, leave a comment if you have any questions, and consider becoming a channel member to help me make more videos like this one.